In today's video, we're going to be diving into Category 5, Hurricane Milton. I can't believe I'm saying that. We went from a tropical storm yesterday to a Category 5 hurricane this morning. Some of the most rapid intensification we have ever seen. And it got so intense already this afternoon that it is already a top 5 Atlantic hurricane as far as winds of all time, at least in recorded history, which is absolutely insane to think about. This is a worst case scenario. And just in case you don't watch the whole video, I want to say that if you're in the Tampa Bay area, uh, this is one that you're not going to want to be there for. Uh, you know, I can't demand that you guys do anything, of course, but we are looking at a situation that, as we mentioned yesterday, is ultimately extremely rare as far as track. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of debate out there, but when we look at the entire recorded history of the Atlantic hurricane seasons, as in multiple seasons, all of the recorded seasons, we have seen like maybe three or four storms take this track. And it has been since the 1980s or the, the 1800s, better yet, since we've seen, seen a storm even take this track. I think that the, the storms back then, it's really hard to get accurate data, but they did not suggest that that was, you know, category fours or fives or threes. Those were tropical storms and weaker hurricanes. So this is very uncharted territory. You know, the Tampa Bay area is very vulnerable to storm surge and, and flooding of, of that nature. And we are seeing a direct hit from a worst case scenario storm. I cannot imagine the scenes that we are going to see coming out of that area absolutely this is one that you're not going to want to be there for we mentioned it yesterday as well but with helene just having come through and caused so much damage and you know there's so much debris uh, out on the sides of the road still and recovery still happening that should make matters even worse in my opinion having all that stuff outside and just floating around i mean i can't imagine that's going to improve things any so this is a worst case scenario and if you don't evacuate for this one you're never going to evacuate for anything because it doesn't really get much worse than this, uh, especially with a direct hit to a vulnerable vulnerable area. There, I don't know what else can really be said that would make you evacuate. So keep that in mind as we move forward. We're looking at the maximum wind uh, gusts swath. So this is through the full storm for any given area. Keep in mind that these the, the European model here and the GFS model have underestimated the intensity of this storm drastically. The maximum we see anywhere on screen here is 127 mile per hour wind gusts. We currently have 175 mile per hour sustained winds. So this is drastically underestimating things. And it's likely due to the the um, resolution of these models that are lower resolution. So they don't really pick up on the fine details. It's probably that alongside the fact that they're just not hurricane models. The models that we have seen do, do a phenomenal job is our hurricane models, which we're going to dive into in a little bit. A lot of times they overestimate things. I would argue that they underestimated things from what we saw yesterday afternoon. And I told you guys, hey, take it with a grain of salt. This is crazy stuff. And it actually outperformed the storm did those models projections. So uh, that is possible to happen the whole way through. We didn't expect to be at a category five this morning. We may be expected to be approaching category three strength. And that even would have been very rapid development. So anything is possible moving forward. This storm has proven that it is over achieved the whole way through and we could see you know very they're saying you know it's only going to be a category two or three by the time it hits we could see anything this could at this point be a four or five as it strikes land and i think it's very likely that it's a three or a four at least so this you know we got to take everything with a grain of salt at this point we're seeing unprecedented territory here as far as the development and just how well this storm is doing as far as development and, uh, you know, dodging basically all of the hindrance, like the land interaction, the shear, it is, despite all of that, just completely blown up. So keep that all in mind. We do see the maximum winds. I don't want to pay too much attention to the amounts because it's all way too low, but this is where the eye travels and this is where we see the eye wall winds And here. This could shift north or south, keep in mind, but we do see kind of a middle ground here somewhere near the the st petersburg area and this would put the worst of the winds straight up to tampa bay obviously the south side winds are moving uh kind of in a in a counterclockwise motion so if the eye of the storm is in the middle we are seeing winds that are moving in uh these directions here 
very, very bad stuff. And we even see really bad winds here on the east coast. So up and down that northeast coast of Florida. Here's the GFS projection. Again, almost the same thing. We see the storm track almost in a more northerly direction. Uh, but again, this would still force those southerly winds straight up into the Tampa Bay. As we take a look at the total precipitation in the reds, we're looking at two to five inches of precipitation. The browns are five to ten. And those blues in there are, are 10 to 15. So we're seeing anywhere from about 10 to 12 in the maximum range here. Maybe a bit more expected here throughout this storm. Widespread areas of 5 to 10 inches, especially where that eye wall travels. And then surrounding areas, as in most of Florida, is seeing 2 to 5 inches of precipitation. Your GFS model here, as you can see, is in full agreement. Maybe a little further north with that precipitation. But the amounts are very, very on par. As we take a look at these hurricane models, I just want to take a look and keep in mind these are from the 12Z run. So we've seen so much intensification uh, on on in real life, and this is by 8 p.m. tonight, and it only has us at 151 miles per hour. Of course, we're about 25 miles per hour higher than that currently. So definitely this is underdoing things. It does get us up to the 175 by time we're looking at 11 p.m. But again, that's about 12 hours from the time I'm recording this video and we are already at 175. This model in particular does get us up to 196.6, which is bordering on like record territory. We see that it does lower in intensity somewhat down to 143, which would still be a very strong category four hurricane as it strikes land here. It's still a category five nearly, uh, just about 8 p.m. on Wednesday as it's approaching. So this would be very close to a Category 5 striking on this particular model. We see the sister model here, HAFSB. This one does a much, much better job. It has us uh, by 2 p.m. Well, it's a little overestimating things because here we are at 5, which is 30 minutes from now, and it has us at 209 miles per hour. So yes, this model is overdoing things. Uh it's almost like the same inaccuracies as the model before, but in the opposite direction, it's a little overblown, but this model does get us well into the 200s, which would be probably the worst storm of all time in, in the Atlantic. Uh, it really rapidly gets us uh, weakening and it only hits at maybe a category three, a weaker category three here into the Tampa Bay. So this would overall be good news, but again, there is some wacky stuff happening on this one. As we take a look at our HWRF model, we see that this one has us much, much weaker. 8 p.m., it's only 157, so very similar to the first model. And we never even really get above that, so we don't even hit Category 5 on this one, even though we're 20 miles per hour, you know, higher than a Category 5 currently. So we're going to actually just disregard this one it's way off. Uh, we do see this one almost doing the same thing. It does get us up to into the 160s, but again, that's a lot lower than what we're even currently seeing. As it approaches land, it stays at about Category 3 status. It weakens significantly as it's striking, as they always do. And then it comes off that east coast as a very strong storm still. As we take a look at the spaghetti model guidance, we see that this one is very close to the Yucatan Peninsula. It is going to head north and move through the state of Florida. We are seeing some of these models now trending at being south of the Tampa Bay. This would be great news for the Tampa Bay. Very bad news for the Fort Myers area. So... Some very highly populated areas are getting severely impacted regardless. And even Tampa Bay, if this storm is south of you, is it's still going to be devastating. Uh, so this is just a, a wrecking ball coming in. And really, if you're anywhere even close to where the storm is tracking, you want to take it very seriously. Uh, it is a smaller storm, but even smaller storms are about the size of almost the state of Florida. So, you know, most areas will see impacts from this. The intensity guidance, as you can see, we're well up into the... Uh, the category five status. Uh, we do have two major groups of model. One kind of keeps us at that category five before weakening uh, after or approaching landfall. And then we have a, a very large group that also have us uh, kind of lowering in that intensity. Keep in mind that landfall will be approximately around this point here. So somewhere, somewhere in here is when landfall is happening. So I doubt it's gonna stay a category five through the state of Florida. Um, I think somewhere in the middle is possible that we're still hovering around, you know, category five, category four. Again, anything is possible. So keep that in mind. Here's the National Hurricane Center. We can see the remnants of Hurricane Kirk there. Hurricane Leslie still out there. We do have a 10% chance of development here to the east of Florida. Doubt that's going to happen with Milton so close. And then Milton here again, 175 mile per hour winds you can see there. And also 
a central pressure of 911 millibars. That is crazy stuff. That is so strong. And again, puts it in that like top five territory of not just Gulf hurricanes, but like literally the entire Atlantic. Very, very terrible storm. Uh, as we take a look at the cone forecast for Milton, we see really we're remaining the same, very close to uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, which that northern coast is going to get just slammed by this major Category 5 hurricane. It's going to rebound northward through the day on Tuesday and Wednesday before striking at around 7 p.m. on Wednesday, perhaps. Again, they have this right into the Tampa Bay. Uh, the cone is anywhere that that low pressure center could track, so we could see it into the Big Bend. We could see it as far south as about Fort Myers. Likely the middle is what's going to be the case. Still a hurricane exiting off the east coast of Florida. So just really, really terrible stuff. And maybe even hitting Bermuda as a uh, tropical storm. So we'll have to watch for that as well. Let's just dive into impacts. Total rainfall from the National Weather Service is showing about 6 to 8 in those kind of uh, lighter oranges like we're seeing in Tampa into the north of Orlando here. So all these areas are about 6 to 8. These darker reds, which are kind of sprinkled in, to the east coast especially is 8 to 12 inches your yellows is uh four to six greens here two to four you can see major rainfall for a lot of florida here occurring overall and then here's your storm surge uh forecast as of now uh right there uh in the big bend looking at one to three feet just to the south of there here in the yellow we're seeing three to five to the north of tampa bay five to ten feet of storm surge uh, the Tampa Bay itself, 8 to 12, which, by the way, I think could be even higher than this, keep in mind. Uh, if this storm truly is a Category 3 or 4 and it hits just to the north of the Tampa Bay, I would expect an upgrade here from this. So keep in mind, but 8 to 12 is devastating. That is absolutely underwater for the Tampa Bay. Uh, south of there, 8 to 12 for a while. Uh, we see the Charlotte Harbor, so, you know, Fort Myers, that area. 5 to 10 feet, and also areas along the east coast outside of the harbor as well, 5 to 10 feet. To the south of there, as we're getting closer to the Everglades, 4 to 7 feet, and then the Everglades themselves, 2 to 4 feet. Even the Keys seeing 1 to 3 feet of storm surge. So far-stretching storm surge impacts here as well. We are going to have bigger uh, updates for this storm. Keep in mind, it is still not expected until the Wednesday evening time frame. So we have all day today, all day tomorrow, and most of the day on Wednesday. So we likely have two big updates upcoming for tomorrow and the next day. Be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.